All right. Oh, eh, eh, oh, eh. I need to fix it again. Uh, uh, okay, center. All right, I think we're back to normal. Yeah, I didn't expect like another opening. I guess the true Fate Hollow Adoraxio starts now or something. We finished the tutorial or <laughs> maybe. I don't know. So there you go. I don't know. I don't know what's happening now. What's going to happen now? We unlock like the the like the true like serious. Does a serious time start now? You know. Well, thus said the druid. Today, the youth who holds the lance in his hands shall have all the glory and praise he desires. Until the day comes when this land and this era itself disappear into the ocean, not a single human, not a single bird, nor a flower will ever forget him. Okay. His name shall be known in five lands. There will not be a single woman who does not love him, and there will be not be a single man who is not proud of him. His swift lance shall be the honor of the Red Branch. Okay, this is Kukalan, Lancer, actually. I assume it's about him. Uh, let the cattle thieves shake the sound of the, of the chariot, how, uh, horses neighing. Our dearest son of light. No, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure. His hands will grasp nothing but glory. When the time comes for his life to end, his knees will not fall to the ground. But know this, child of the hazel tree. Like the flicker of a star, that glory shall soon burn itself out. Together with your feats of arms that know no rival, faster than anyone, you will sink into the oblivion beyond the horizon. Okay. I assume that was the prophecy, you know, given to the Knights of the Red Branch. That was Kukulan's, like, prophecy or whatever. But, uh, spring, six years ago, I became acquainted with a strange man. Two years have passed since I had been recruited into the Mages Association. Ignored and never asked to do anything, I was given, uh, given a place to be in form only. Like a useless antique. Ancient and well known, handled with great care, yet no one intends to use it. Tucked away deep within the storehouse. I, uh, <clears throat> I spent my days only to be sooner or later forgotten. Of course, there was no meaning in that existence. I left my hometown out of fear of simply rotting away. Though young and ignorant, I left because of a vague desire to do what I could. I had no value outside of being antique. To gain some value was simple. I just had to show them how useful I was, what I could do. The things I could do. I took up the one role that many magi hated, the bloody cleanup assignment. Practical magic that works in a real fight. That was the subject I took pride in. Now and in the past, I had a talent unsurpassed by those around me. And so, after handling countless fights, the association finally recognized my value and granted me a position. The ruling elite, lords of the association, as if to rid themselves of a nuisance, had to proclaim thus. The inexperienced newcomer, Basel Fragamurimitz, as a special exception, shall be appointed as a ceiling designation importer. Ceiling designation. It is both a title given to magi with special talent and an edict set down by the association. Some magic cannot be learned by study. The owners of magic that only exists in their blood or genetic makeup and cannot be passed down are treated as treasures by the association, which makes an all-out order to shelter them. Hosp hospital or hospitable? Hospitable? Yeah, hospitable. As it sounds, the order amounts to imprisonment. The Magi that receive the sealing designation are treated as precious samples to be passed on for generations to come. The association captures them and then ensures their talents preserved in its current state. Hmm, interesting. I'm, I'm reminded of that uh, in one route, I believe the Unlimited, Blades, uh, Unlimited Blade Works route, where Shiro uh, was turned into like a magic object by Caster, right? Because Shiro is very unique. I imagine if he, uh, he, if he was ever captured like this, that's what would happen to him, you know? He would just simply be turned into like a living tool to be used by powerful magi or something. Simply put, they are too different from speci uh, specimen spe specimens immersed in form formal formaldehyde. Formalida formaldehyde. Formaldehyde. You know, the, the, the things you always see, you know, in the scientists' little like tubes, I guess, the chemicals. <laughs> Anyway, uh, what looks like a well-intentioned order in the association's eyes is equivalent to a death sentence for those receiving it. Actually, what do you call it? You know those like measuring 
glass like tube bottles. There's a word for it. I kind of forgot what it is. Not not a beaker. A beaker is like a bigger one. It's like the, the small thin ones. What do you call them? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that's what I imagine. You know, that's what Formella Formella. I can't say the word. Formella had died. That's usually where you know. That's what the chemical is inside, and also other stuff. Uh, most magi reject the edict and flee. The death sentence itself isn't the reason, however. The people receiving the sealing designation, the designation, are all outstanding magi in the most in the most basic sense. They prioritize their pursuit of magic above all else. Their own mortality holds no meaning for them. For one who is devoting day after day to their research, a sealing designation is unthinkable. Once pickled in formalaha, formalade, formaladehyde, their study of magic will end there and then. For that reason, they leave the association and go on the run. Oh, rogue magus. There's no reason. There's no need to ask、uh, what for. To slip back into society and to bury themselves into their research deeply, fully, and to their heart's content. Those that have received the sealing designation and go on the run generally belong to one or two groups. The first become hermits, cutting off all contact, hiding their magic and only teaching it to blood relatives. Those are the fallen magi. While they have to be found and sheltered before their abilities are lost completely, the danger they pose is near zero. Unless their talents are just too great, the association will not pursue them either. The second category are the shut-ins that retreat to their own land, wizards wholly devoted to mastering their craft. These are unsurpassed magi, aiming for ever greater heights. It would take but a few years to take their abilities to another level, surely bringing the association great rewards for their efforts. However, none of the ordinary morals and justice exists for them. Having shed their restraints, their first and foremost goal is the discovery of the unknown, sacrifice of the unrelated. Uh, or rather, sacrifice of unrelated bystanders is but one way towards it. It is a problem, but however much of a problem it may be, as long as they manage it well, even the association overlooks it. They are left alone until achievements are made. The pursuit of the magic is the mage's association's own principle, after all. But should they prove to be unsuccessful, should they violate the association's greatest postulate? A postulate, post postulate, secrets must be concealed. The response will be swift, and preventing occult knowledge from being disseminated isn't the only reason. When it comes to protecting such valuable assets, they will be content with preserving just the bodies alone. Should news of the matter spread, a power will appear to bring punishment to the wizard in the name of justice. At present, the greatest enemies are the inquisitors of the Holy Church. You're coming. They act to incinerate not only the wizards themselves, but also the knowledge they built along with them. But、uh, well, I did. I, 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 you know, Kotomini Kire was one of the inquisitors, I guess. But like, I guess he also ended up betraying them.、Uh, while the desire to stop the violence is the same, their final objective is the direct opposite. Despite a non-aggression pact between the Mages Association and the Holy Church, scuffles minor enough to be left off record continue. No, rather, it's on the assumption that they be left off record that the killings continue even now. As a result, my job became not only to deal with mad wizards but also to fight、uh, executors. About one year had passed since it became my daily life. While on a mission to enforce a sealing designation, I became acquainted with one such man, an executor of the Holy Church. Hmm, a priest convicting all kinds of sinners in God's name. Hmm, Kire. And young lady. So I assume we're. Um, I mean, I think I'm pretty sure we're Bazet, right? At least this is from Bazet's perspective, I guess. And as naturally as that, the priest requested cooperation. He had lo、uh, lost all the comrades he brought along, and my team was nearly annihilated as well. The two of us were the only survivors left. We were standing in the garden of a magus that was using corpses in an attempt to revive the soul. Hmm. Yeah, similar to that ghost story, actually. You know, of、uh, someone trying to like 
revive their mother or whatever. Turn everyone to zombies. Normally, no matter how desperate the predicament may be, cooper cooperation between the uh, ex uh, executors... Executors? Ex executioners? I was, uh, you know, for some reason I want to say executioners, but that's not the word. It's executors. Executors. And the major association is unthinkable, short of an edict from the Pope himself. The executors are followers of the purest form of faith. To preserve their own beliefs, they would never associate with heretics like us. This one priest, however, was unique. He likes Mapo Tofu. And he's also really evil? I don't know, you shouldn't trust him. Perhaps he was sympathetic towards Magi in general. Not a hint of disdain on his face. He approached me like one of the his own, with a warm smile. Mm, yorokobe. Yorokobe shoujo. Uh, I had an obligation to recover the Magus name in the sealing designation order, and the priest had no choice but to end the Magus's life. Our co cooperation would come to an end, and the priest would become my enemy. Oh uh, yeah, they did just mention that, uh, or Bazette, I guess, did just mention that uh, recovering the body is fine as well, I guess. Those were his words. He would leave the flesh to me. As long as he was the one to dispose of the soul, that was enough for him. Just how much weight was placed behind those words. I believe the priest would ease that surprise even my own self. This man was dangerous. My own experience was telling me of the less than saintly venom he possessed, yet I still took his hand despite myself. Yeah, I'm, you shouldn't trust Kyure. Oh well. Thinking back, indeed this priest was no saint. But among all the people I had met up until that point, he was the only one possessing a power I could respect. We proceeded to exchange names in order to secure this temporary trust. Two days had passed. The magus that amused himself playing of the corpse is now dealt with. We have returned to our respective employers. To be honest, I did have a feeling we meet again. I was chasing after Magi to receive the sealing designation. I keep saying that wrong. Sealing designation? Designation? The priest, as an executor, was hunting down heretics. With his magic related knowledge, he was likely deployed on mage hunting missions rather than a dead apostle or demon possession ones. The two of us were a great match as competitors. The first time was just a coincidence. The second and third, on the other hand, were probably both unconsciously desired and inevitable. The times that we had met without fail were also the times we were both alone. Although I had decided to act independently from then on to begin with, so uh, so he was so he was only uh, yeah, so he was only the, so he was the only one to lose his comrades. Okay, mm, which makes me suspicious. Is Kira murdering his own like friends? I don't know. We have fought side by, uh, side by side three times, trusting each other. Neither of us reporting it back. All of those remain secret. I had judged him worthy of my trust and took his hand. That trivial secret had just a little charm to it. そして、その少年は自分から聖人の義を迎えたのです。一人の奴隷度がその日に戦士になるものの未来を占った。川瀬に移った未来は不吉なもので、今日戦士になるものは最大の栄光を得る代わりに誰よりも早く命をなくすという
みんな恐れて動かなかったのに占いに無関心だった少年だけは迷うことなく王のもとに駆け込んで今すぐ自分を戦士として認めてくれというのです王は散々少年を止めるのですが少年は聞かずついに戦士として認められましたその後の話は神話の通りですアルスターの猛犬の英雄譚はご存知でしょう、mm -hmm. I mean Lancer did literally tell us that story to us you know the person reading the visual novel but I guess well she's talking to Kira though I guess you know It was an end of our third joint battle. Unable to bear the signs of the night, I talked of something really、uh, entirely unrelated to my job. Somehow, I ended up reciting an old tale of my hometown. This is Bazette, and this is Kirei right there.、Mm. They know each other.、Mm. Which makes it, well, we'll see, I guess. I think I know what happens between them. I think, I think it's made obvious in Fate Say Night. They did mention the incident, but in case I'm spoiling things, you know, I'm not going to say it out loud, I guess. I think you're going to say it out loud, I guess. I think you're going to say it out loud, I guess. I think you're going to say it out loud, I guess. I think you're going I might, be, I might be wrong, so. Mm. The priest looked at me with a melancholic smile. <laughs> There's nothing I could hide from this man. Mercilessly, he saw through my heart. By all, night,、uh, by all rights, I ought to have feared this priest, and yet having my feelings laid up open by him had put me at ease instead. なんの戸惑いもなく王に今すぐ武者たちがしたいと告げるのです王に理由を問われても一切答えずとにかく戦士になりたいの一点張りそうして聖人の儀を進めていくのですが少年には占いに対する希望も不安も全くないのです占いな
私はそこまで考えなしではない I couldn't believe my eyes. The priest muttered with a frown, as if I had hurt his feelings. I believe that was the first time I'd seen him display human like emotion. I don't know. Has he ever displayed human like emotion? Only, only when someone else is suffering, I feel like. I feel like. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> あなたも人生に確信を持っている人ですからほう確信とはどんな誰も必要としていないところあなたには最後まで自分だけで生きていく覚悟がある本当は私の手を借りなくてもいいのですただ効率がいいから付き合っているだけでしょうに Once again, a melancholic smile appeared on the priest's face. The affirmation brought a tinge of pain to me, however, little. It was only our third mission, barely ten days had passed, yet I already felt painfully aware of the kind of person that he was. This man would absolutely not associate with a human being. He needed no one, he hated no one. As strong as a human could possibly be, he was an alien that one's common sense would be telling you to stay away from. It's also pre precisely why he had no hidden face. Evil described him perfectly one word. Even now, I still do not know how I got charmed by such a dangerous man. Oh, really? May maybe Bazette has a crush on Mr. k i r a y That's not a good thing to happen to you. This is what I thought. However, should I, by some chance, make this man who needs no,、uh, no one somehow attached to me? It will bring me a peace of mind far superior to anything material.、Oh, yes, so she's, re she's really attracted to tsunderes. Kotome ni kiri, the ultimate tsundere. I guess, I don't know. Thus said the priest, throwing my wood into the fire. All of a sudden, I. I need to bond in the mono. I was a anatomy on the sea or what they kill in a smaller night. You mon direct. Tokini. Ik tell you, Kotosai, Kurushko, my dad. I let slip a much older, much deeper truth within me. Another piece of wood went to the fire. I'd made a mistake. I was sure he was disappointed now. My ability to handle a machine like Ro was the only reason he ever called out to me. Someone like me, who whined about my troubles to total strangers, was unnecessary to him. Heavy silence fell between us. I was too afraid to look at him. And then, as if nothing at all had happened. <laughs> This was told to me in an emotionless yet sincere voice. Cross the oceans, fly the skies, throw away your tiny self, your tiny country, and go around the globe with a single suitcase, is what he was saying. Like the age of discovery, like a seaman that believes in the yet unknown paradise beyond this sea. My reply came naturally, because I had a belief, as he would say. I believe there must have been a time when, just the same as me, he found it hard to breathe. A major incident. Hmm, I wonder what that one. Like, what kind of incident would this be? Maybe something we learned about Kirei before? I don't know. I, well, I do remember in Heaven's Field, Kirei, like. 
his wife died and everything but uh but the, but the, the true tragedy is not the fact that his wife died but that he didn't get to kill his wife you know i don't know something like that uh it did not seem to be related to hunting magi this priest had experienced a great war that was unknown to me Oh, he's just laying it out there. That's that's basically Kirei's character right there. He's just evil. They can't stop it. He can't stop being evil. Even Mapo Tofu, his love for Mapo Tofu will not overcome his evil nature. Oh no. The priest wasn't speaking about the past. This man remained unable to love even to that day. Well, he does love like human suffering, so I guess there's that. Well, there was no hesitation in the priest's voice. He may have lamented the past, but he considered it done and over with. そうだな。今は己を許すのではなく私という人間を容認した訳を知りたい。私にもし自分の人生があるのなら残る全ての時間を答えを得るために使おうと思っている。けどあなたの疑問に答えられる人はいないのでしょう。そうだな。まだ答
It has no meaning to it. Uh, has no meaning here. She is something that never existed to begin with. She's everywhere and nowhere, just like him. Um, him? What do you mean by him? Do you mean Yoru Kube? No, anyway, the flow of time is irrelevant here. If not mistaken, I'm visiting this place for the first time. Okay, I mean, I guess we have a choice. Maybe the second time, third time, fourth time, maybe, huh? I've got a lot to ask her about. I don't know anything about the person I'm about to meet. All I know is her name and the tense atmosphere that surrounded her. Karen. The sound of that name is like a delicate piece of glasswork, reminiscent of her figure. Guess she knows how to play the organ. I open the door. The sunlight from the windows and the ceiling whites out my vision, blinding me. An uninhabited chapel. There, I can see a nun affectionately playing a melody on the organ. Is that what she is? She's a nun? Is that what that whole getup is? I don't feel like, I feel like that's not really a nun, you know, uniform, but all right. Did she not notice my arrival? She does not pause in her performance, nor play a single wrong note. But without rising to greet her visitor, the woman remains dutifully at her task. Or dutifully? Dutifully. A slight dizziness comes over me. Is it because of the high ceiling? The music of the organ reverberates throughout the chapel, filling the space with sound. I was about to walk up to the organ, but then I had a sudden change of heart. I sit down at the very back of the rows of pews. It'll be over soon anyway. It doesn't seem like it's one of those performances that lasts for hours. I can just wait for it to end. The tedium of the piece dulls my ability to think. It's so peaceful, it's making me sleepy. As I sit there dozing off, I surrender myself to the music worked by the woman's fingers. Yeah. I mean, compared to, uh, I mean, when we, whenever we meet Kire, you know, an organ also plays. But his theme is much more ominous. This one is, ah, uh, it's a bit better. You know, not as evil, I feel like. It's just an ordinary hymn. Nothing noteworthy about it. There's nothing special about her finger work, nor is her performance imbued with any emotion. She simply plays. It's as if she's performing a daily chore. This performance, it's as though she's praying. So this is what those who come to worship are so touched by. The house of God, built by the hands of men. A song of glory in his name, written by a pen held in a human hand. The men of centuries past must have endeavored to express something sacred by way of performances like these. Like me? <laughs> by, by way of performances like this. In order to believe, and to make others believe as well, they gathered to create these spaces, so far removed from those familiar in daily life. The cornerstone of shared illusion, the crystallization of prayer, for tranquility and forgiveness of daily trespasses. From that point of view, this place could be called an appropriate boundary for the eyes of God to rest upon. Even non-believers should be able to feel a divine presence in here. However, I'm afraid I feel nothing holy in this place. The image it brings to mind is that of, ru of a ruin, nothing more. What can I compare it to but a wasteland devoid of human life? Ah, uh, so. I prop my head up with both hands and remain seated, waiting in the days for the heim, or heim, him, 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 him to end. Actually, I don't know how to say it. Him or heim? I think it's him, right? Him? Hmm. Uh, gods in ruins, huh? Well, whichever, whichever, whichever it may be, both of them are hollow. Hmm. The performance that grated on my ears is over.
Okay. Oh, actually, no, she is actually wearing, like, a typical nun uniform. Okay. You know, all the other times we meet Karen, she's not really wearing a nun, like, uh, you know. Actually, what do you call it? It's, it's like a habit, right? It's called, like, a... It's a habit, right? Is that the right the word? I don't know. It's a weird word because habit also means something else. You know, like, you know, nun clothes. Otherwise, she's wearing, like, weird... Like, she's wearing anime cosplay otherwise, but... Well, of her own character? Anyway. Also, I noticed she's, yeah, she's bandaged here. I wonder why. Hmm. Anyway. The performance that grated on my ears over, the one rises from the bench, and the pipe organ disappears from the chapel. That's right. This church never had such an exquisite organ in it in the first place. Wait, what? Wait a minute. Was that like a weird magic thing? It's probably something she had brought here. Or maybe... Mm -mm. I don't understand. A woman with the ability to bring something that huge and make it disappear is right up there with Caster in terms of mysteriousness. Yeah, okay. So I was wondering, like, I thought, I thought Shiro meant like there wasn't one before and now she brought it. But no, it was like weird magic shit, you know? She somehow like projected like a giant organ out of nowhere. Well, not at all surprised by my presence, she walks briskly towards the pew where I sit. I thought she hadn't noticed me, but it looks like she knew all along that I was here. Okay, she she's normal now, I guess. Seems normal. And, and, and very uh, hospitable. She's acting almost as if her feelings have been hurt. This girl. She said she was welcoming me, but is this her first time greeting a visitor? Uh, I mean, I know it's Karen. What's your last name again? She mentioned the last name. I can't remember now. I answer her concisely. Perhaps she's surprised by something as our conversation suddenly stops. Hmm. You know, the fact that he's just white hair and then and she also she's pretty emotionless, right? Little bit, I don't know. The way she talks, I guess. How do you say emotionlessness? Emotionless? Emotionless? I don't know what's emotionless. I don't know. Emotionless. Her emotionless voice. At least, you know, the cliche anime trope where the, the voice actor speaks in like a sort of monotone way. Uh, reminds me of uh, Homunculi actually, you know? Ilya's like homunculus maze. I guess um, Lizret in particular, you know, sort of. So I wonder, is she a homunculus? She doesn't have the red eyes though, so she's not... Or maybe, I don't know. Because if she had the red eyes, that, that, would, that would make sense. But she has yellow eyes, so I don't know. Maybe it's just normal white anime hair. Because in anime, white hair is actually normal for like a young person. There are three things I intend to ask. I start with the first. あんたは何者なんだ。何にも。どこから何の目的で不意気にやってきたんだよ。ただの観光客だ。なんて言い訳は通らないぜ。私はこの教会の公認代理です。本来私程度では教会を任されることはないのですが、今回に限り期限付き
someone was、uh, going to take over the church, and I guess that's who she is. I mean, that makes sense. Now that she's wearing a, like a uniform, I also mentioned that I also saw like、uh, her other hand was also like bandaged up, you know, her right hand and her left hand. I wonder why. I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. So she's like an intern, maybe. そんなのにお使いをさせるなんて教会ってのは人手不足なのか。そりゃお使いの内容にもよるけどさ、見てくるだけなら犬でもでき。適材適所ということです。There you go. See the little, little, little hands. Why is it bandaged up? More so, I guess more so her wrist, though. The Five Gods of the Empire Civil War has been destroyed by the Empire of the Empire. Let's check the body of the body of the body. Accidentally skip. In fact, well, I could do this, I guess. I never really did this, but. Okay, that's what she said. Sometimes I accidentally you know, skip over the lines because I think they finished talking, but then they're not, actually. Okay. She quickly lowers her hands and takes a step back. That really came out of the blue. That woman with nary an expression on her face just walked right up to me and used both hands to squeeze my face. Oh, okay, that's what she was doing, I guess. Had I continued to make fun of her in that position, I dare say she might have headbutted me. And then did a suplex. And then she would do like a, a like a body drop from like、uh, from like、uh, from the top rope, and then she would pick her up and then do a stone cold stunner. Or I don't know. Anyway. で、聖杯だけどあんたはもう見つけたのか。聖杯らしきものが機能していることは確認しましたが、確保はできていません。私に与えられた役割は調査ですから、これ以上のことは私の分を超えています。うーん。それじゃ、聖杯を奪取してど
それで俺を呼びつけたってことかいいねビジネスライクを大いに結構安っぽい正義感より何倍もいい Cheap sense of justice that's ironic coming from Shiro ね聖杯はどこにあるんだ場所知ってるんだろその弦には横島のものが感じられますあなたには教えません She turns away from me. Looks like she isn't impressed. Yeah, Shiro is very, I don't know, Shiro is very like dismissive with this cute waifu. I don't really understand why, but maybe Shiro for some reason doesn't really like her. Like subconsciously. For some reason, I don't know. それは言えません。約束がありますから。うん。それに、私が教えてはあなたの誇りを怪我してしまう。Well, I really don't value my pride that much. Besides, my pride would already be hurt the moment I asked the question. In other words, I'm prepared to cheat if that's what it takes to get full marks. <laughs> ご愉快そうですね。力づくで聞き出しますかだから。あんたには興味ないって言ってるだろう。力づくなんて言ったら、ほら。Like I want to. Hmm. Why? Why? I don't know. Why is Shiro acting like. I feel like he's acting in a weird way when he's interacting with Karen for some reason. This is something that Angry Mayu would say. I, I, we did see him use his dagger and also turning evil a little bit. I don't know. Shiro, what's happening? Are you turning evil? Shiro, the Shiro I know wouldn't just think this in his head, you know? Like, I want to violate her out of anger and hatred. That's like, that's, a, that's an Avenger line. That's not Shiro. But Shiro, you're acting weird. I don't know about it, but it must have happened at least once. Why are you blushing? What, what did we say? What did Shiro say? Didn't one of come out of your body? Oh, yeah. It did. Come to think of it, something's up with her. She's not scared of the monsters. She gets hurt for no apparent reason, and she even makes monsters appear. Maybe she's more like a stage magician than a magus. That's <laughs> I've heard of it. It's a kind of spiritual damage that's well known in the Western world. The Japanese equivalent would be something like being possessed by a fox or a dog spirit. A non human something invades a human and starts destroying them from the inside, similar to a curse. The symptoms are too numerous to describe, but in the Western world, they're all caused by the concept of demons. For reasons unknown to humankind, demons tend to possess people who are considered virtuous. Compared to the Japanese concept of possession, which is based on the will of the curse caster, the Western one has no will at all. It's a phenomenon that occurs similar to a traffic accident. Those who are possessed are often ordinary virtuous men. Their minds are eroded by the demons who enter them. They disparage morality and the teachings of God, and they terrorize those who are around them. Hmm, reminds me of a certain <laughs> Mapo Tofu loving priest, but I don't, I don't think he was possessed by a demon necessarily, though. I don't know. Not by direct violence, by, but by showing them what raw, ugly creatures humans become just by being stripped of reason. Those are, the only uh, those are only the initial symptoms, however. Then they come, they burst out of your body, I guess. Very violently, maybe. I don't know. Those who have been afflicted for a while won't be corrupted on a mental level alone. A severe case of possession causes a change even in the outward appearance. The formless thing that possessed the victim will try to project itself upon the human body. The change begins from developing the level of body control that is unthinkable for a normal human being and ends with mutation of body parts. The changes depends on the class of the thing. The stronger the demon, the further away from the human the victim transforms. But fortunately, a demon cannot be resurrected in the human body. A person who is possessed will be forced into an unnatural transformation and simply die as a result. 
the western depicted demons all look rather weird. Two heads, hooves, or limbs arranged in the shape of a hexagram. Definitely not something a human with only one set of arms and legs could imitate. Okay. okay what kind of demon is this then? Is it like sword? It looks like a claw? Hmm. Like a claw sticking out of our butt? <laughs> I don't know. However, they say there are some rare cases of humans who can resist the transformation. It's similar to how magi that crave knowledge can become vampires. Okay. They are apparently heretics who extend their lifespan by making use of the thing that con continues to devour the blueprint known as their soul. Then this woman... Then what is the weird thing that comes out of your body? ま、の今すごく口汚いこと言わなかったか。せっかちな人ね、と言ったのよ。悪魔の温床となった人間に飲み発言する病と言えるでしょう。ウイルスのように周囲の人間には広がらない毒です。当たり前だろ。月物が風のように空気感染していたら、今頃真っ当な人間はいなくなる。そうですね。けれど、霊
Or maybe not. I was thinking like, I don't know. I don't know what they're implying, but like, um, when she wrote that one time when he got close to Karen, I was thinking like she's sensitive to like. You know, any kind of like demonic presence. So I was thinking, like maybe Shiro was like possessed by a demon. That's why, like a like a weird demon monster bursted out of her body as well because Shiro was the evil influence. But maybe not. Maybe not, they're not discussing that, or maybe that's not necessarily the case. That was like something else that affected her. I don't know. I don't understand it, but this is one bit of advice I should probably follow. All right, unless things get serious, let's try not to get too close. Randomly hurting each other is no good. <laughs> He's blushing for some reason. I don't know. Um, okay, so yeah. Okay, so I, for some reason I thought it was like Shiro causing that, but maybe not. It was simply the monsters. <laughs> In other words, if they aren't near, she won't go nuts either. If so, would those monsters' symptoms be creation of the same monster? Hmm, interesting.俺たちは思っていた。けど、この戦いは曖昧でどこかおかしい。トサガはこれが再会ではなく再現だと言った。仮に、そう、仮に仮に聖杯を欲しがっているマスターがいるとしてもだ。こんな終わりのない戦いを
解決できるのは第五次聖杯戦争に参加したあなただけですなんでだあいやあんたが部外者っていうのはわかるよ聖杯戦争を終わらせられるのは参加しているやつだけっていうのもうなずけるけどそれがなんで俺限定なんだ遠坂でもさくらでもマスターなら勝ち抜けばこれは第五次聖杯戦争の再現です前回の勝者はあなただったそういった意味でこの戦いを司るのはあなたですエミヤシロウだけが第五次聖杯戦争を終わりにできるいいですかこの再現を解決したいのならそれは願った者が自ら聖杯を放棄するか前回通り勝者たるあなたがその人物を倒さなければならない I guess that's the goal なんか言葉遊びみたいだけどこれが第五次聖杯戦争の再現である以上結末も同じように俺が勝つことにしないとダメってことええこれは聖杯と聖杯の戦い上級の魔術は概念と概念の戦いになりますどちらが強者なのかではなくどちらがほころびのないルールを有しているかの計り合いになる私には聖杯という秩序を論破するだけの力はない助言者として介入するのが精一杯戦いに参加したくとも言葉の決まりに阻まれてしまうのですうん、mm. Sounds like she's got her hands tied and also bandaged 納得いったとりあえず礼は言っとくぜ何をすればいいか分かったからな I stand up I have asked enough, and it's about time for me to go. I want to hurry back to the city. もうあんたにも教会にも用はない。I wave and head out.This church has always given me, the,、uh, given me the headache. I don't want to stay for too long.Frankly, I don't want to have anything to do with this woman either.Yeah, that's, it's always so weird. Why does, why does she just really hate Karen for some reason?Maybe remi- maybe she reminds him of Yorokobe Shonen. 待って。君の願いはようやくかな。一つだけ。質問。あなたの問いには答えたのですから。Well, she did have one question. How can I possibly refuse? Hey, why isn't she talking? The last few times? My mind goes blank for a moment. Was that her question? I mean, well, the last few times. I don't know if it, it was. Either, like, the last few times in the sense that we did meet her, like, a few times, you know, before we died.、Um, and also, the, the very last time as well, we fought, like, a bunch of, like, weird demons together.、Um, But does she also, the, is she meaning like last few times as in Shiro went to this church before and this Shiro doesn't remember that or something? I don't know. 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 Not only there is there no way of reading her feelings, her thought process is also hard to handle. You know, I was thinking, like, for some reason, I'm thinking, like, maybe he's being like, like, Shiro was for some, re- for some reason being like, uh, uh, what's, what's the word? I was gonna say osmosis? That's not the right word. <laughs> Like he's, he was, he's being like, you know, possessed, right? I was mentioning like demon possession. Maybe he's being possessed by a v e n t u r or something. But maybe he's just grumpy. Maybe he's just grumpy. 
そうですか日中私はここにしかいられません夜に出会えるのは4日目の終わりだけですからあなたとの関係はこのままということですねそうなんだけど心配するなどのみちもうここには寄りつかない This time I'm really leaving the church. Really, I always get halted like this when I'm, when I'm here. The door closes. No more white haired waifu? No. And that's why I don't want to associate with her. Who the hell asked her to pray for my safety? I mean, look, if she does that, it makes it seem like I'm out of luck or something. Well, you are, though? <laughs> you are, Shiro. You are out of luck. Um, there's another scene with Lancer, I guess. I wonder what he's up to. You know, Bazette was talking about him, you know, with Kirei, remember? What is he doing? <laughs> 